In this episode of Travelog, I revel in the old school charm of Wuzhou before visiting world famous Yangshuo, and I stumble on the marvel of ancient human engineering that joins two of China's greatest waterways, the Yangtze and Pearl Rivers. The Pearl River, known in Chinese as the Zhujiang, with its eastern, western, and northern tributaries, is actually a vast river system, the third longest river in China and the second largest by volume. And sitting on a vital junction in this river system is Wuzhou. Hello and welcome to this edition of Travelog. In this episode, we travel along the Pearl River upward, and today we reach the city of Wuzhou. Wuzhou really enjoys a unique location because it's at the confluence of three rivers. Namely, we have a Guizhang River, a Xunjiang River, the two converging to form this Xijiang River, which is also the upper stream of the Pearl River. Now. Wuzhou is also a city with a long history. It was founded 2,200 years ago. And it's also known as the birthplace of one of the major languages in China, Cantonese, which is spoken by hundreds of millions of people, both home and abroad. And today we're going to stop by for a while to know more about the city and its history. Wuzhou is situated in the east of Guangxi, just outside Guangdong province. Incredibly, 85% of all the water in Guangxi, a region roughly the size of the UK, flows through here. Well, just look behind me, look at all these old buildings. You could be mistaken about the location, about where we are. We're not in Macau, not in Singapore. This is in Wuzhou. Well, you can clearly see the Chinese and the Western influence in the architecture design in all these old buildings. They started to have a style like this since the 1920s when the city of Wuzhou was still a very important commercial hub at the time. Their trade connecting uh, the provinces like Guizhou, Yunnan, Guangdong and Hong Kong and Macau. You could see at the time lots of overseas and joint venture companies stationed here probably just along this street. You can almost still hear and feel the hustle and bustle 100 years ago. As one of the Pearl River's three main tributaries, the Xijiang, or West River, was once a major commercial waterway. A lot of wealth flowed along it into Wuzhou. Most of the local merchants did their business from these Jilo tenement buildings with shop fronts on the ground floor and living quarters upstairs. Many of the locals still live in these chilo. During its heyday last century, thousands of merchants profited from Wuzhou's status as a treaty port open to foreign trade. Not far from here, the British established a consulate, a sign of the importance all the great powers once ascribed to Wuzhou's strategic location. We've also found some iron rings over here. Actually, you can find them everywhere here on each pillar, not just at this level, but also at higher level. So the question is, what are they for? Here is a sculpture that tells everything about the use of the iron rain. Now, remember, Wuzhou is a port city along the major river. Flooding has always been a major problem for the city. So when it happens, what do we do? No matter what, life has to go on no matter what happens. So if there is a flood, if the water level is this high or even that high, there will be boats on the street. These rings are for tying up all these boats. Remember, life has to go on. You can do either do business with people living on the second floor, or the residents will be using these ladders to go back to their own houses. 
The people of Wuzhou are so used to flooding that they've even given some of their traditional dishes names with the watery theme, such as boat porridge and flooded street. In fact, the city is home to a number of weird and wonderful sounding dishes, such as paper wrapped chicken and turtle jelly. Table. Filled snail. This is tofu. This is this is interesting. This is pig feet. This is rice noodles, and this is a uh, herbal jelly, and this. Yes, I. I would like to draw your attention to this. This looks like a bug. It is indeed a bug. I, I just double checked. Um, just um, I checked my dictionary. It's called. Uh, uh, dietiscus. I have no idea what it means, but we're going to eat it because I, I was just told this is one famous snack in the city of Wuzhou. Take one. Okay. Take one. One, two, three, go. Oh. The Cantonese really do eat everything. <laughs> This is something else that's in the grow to Cantonese culture. The lion dance is usually performed for important celebrations, and today's occasion is certainly very special. It's the Dragon Mother's birthday. The story goes that a local girl from a poor family found a dragon's egg in the Xijiang River. From it, they hatched five snakes, which with time grew into powerful dragons. Now, this is the Dragon Mother's Temple, first viewed in early Song Dynasty, that is over 1100 years ago. According to legend, the uh, Dragon Mother was born in the Qing Dynasty, and today actually is exactly the 2307th birthday of the Dragon Mother. She's the goddess and protector of all sailors and all fishermen, and whenever they set sail, or when they pass this location, they would come here, they would burn some incense to wish the best for their safety and for their prosperity. There are striking similarities between the sea goddess Mazu, who's worshipped in Fujian and Taiwan, and our dragon mother, who's venerated throughout the Pearl River Delta. Though her name sounds intimidating, she's a benevolent deity with a huge number of followers. You can see how popular this temple is. People are here to send their best wishes by burning the incenses. All the best. We continue our journey along the Pearl River upward, and today we reach Pingle County. Now, remember earlier I mentioned in Wuzhou that Guizhang River, Xunjiang River converge to form uh, Xijiang River, which is the upper stream of the Pearl River, and now this is the beginning of Guizhang River. Again, if you look at the map, you'll see clearly we have three rivers here. That is Lijiang. On the other side is Lijiang, and right over there is Chajiang. These three rivers converge to form Guizhang River. Now, once again, Pingle County is also um, an ancient city. It was first founded nearly 2,000 years ago. Despite being little more than 100 kilometers away from scenic Guiling, one of China's most popular tourist destinations, Pingle County is still relatively unknown. Tourists
tourism is the industry they're trying to develop for its local economy and right over there just opposite the river we can see a new harbor being built. When that is finished, we can expect cruise ships coming from the upper stream Yangshu, which we will be visiting next, all the way here and all the way down to Wuzhou. And that's a cruise line of hundreds of kilometers. If you like a bit of peace and tranquility, this is definitely the place to come. Rongjing, sitting at the confluence of two rivers, was originally established as a port during the Song Dynasty. And it used to be very lively by all accounts, though you wouldn't know it, judging by what you see today. Well, we are visiting an ancient village, a 900-year-old village. But what is greeting us first are all these massive trees. They're said to be over 1,000 years old. And what is unique about these trees, you can see all these branches forming a notch. So this is a passageway leading all the way to the ancient village, to the ancient street in there. The village is well preserved. It seems frozen in time. Its huge mansions and intricate wooden carvings hark back to a golden age of commerce, a time when merchants from nearby Fujian and Guangdong provinces flocked here to do business. The houses are typical of southern China, simple and elegant. Still today, the villagers draw their water from wells. Times may have changed in the wider world, but life here continues to defy modernization. Coming up next, I pay a visit to one of China's most iconic landscapes, the magical karst mountains of Yangshu. An hour's drive away from Rongjing is world-famous Yangshu. This dramatic cast landscape has for centuries made it a popular tourist destination. In recent times, Yang Shuo provided a stark backdrop for one of the Star Wars films. And naturally, this has always been a place where artists have found inspiration. Uh,经常在这边画画吗? 那这个也是为了那个折扇的那个扇面吗？对，这个是素材吧，应该讲也是可以做扇子的。啊，那一会儿去店里看看吧。行，好啊，嗯，可以可以啊，欢迎。Our painter is a master of the intangible cultural heritage of fan making. There are countless different ways to make a fan. But here, they prefer to use locally sourced bamboo and high-quality Xuan paper.
啊，我对行业我已经三十年了。三十年了，对。这是山谷的地方是吧？对，这个地方很山谷。China probably has the longest history of fan making in the world. Originally, fans were purely functional, but they quickly became collectors' items after famous poets and artists started inscribing them. Though fans can be made of some pretty expensive materials, silk mounted on ivory, for example, their real worth is traditionally determined by the artwork. The best fan painters. Can express their creativity and display their skills in poetry, calligraphy, and ink painting. Actually, it's just a goal to make Jiangsu Gongan. Ah. 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 Ah.
It's remarkable how they almost seem to grow out of the Lijiang River. Take a look at the note and look behind me. That's the scene taken from this area, from this spot, for the 20 yuan note. Now, if you look at the landscape, it's a typical scene you'll see in the area of Guilin or Yangshu. And not just the beautiful landscape. If you look at the different layers of darkness and brightness, that is also, I guess, the inspiration for a lot of Chinese ink painting artists. These days, the number one recreational activity on the Lijiang River is rafting. Lijiang River. Just look around here. This is what this area is famous for. The landscape, the river. Now, here is the little picture of the, the huge network of rivers. This is Lijiang. It goes on to join Lijiang River and Chajiang River to form Guijiang River, which in turn joins uh, Xunjiang River to form this Xijiang River, which is the uh, upper stream of the Pearl River. Now, not just the landscape and the river, there is also an ancient town nearby. We're also going to spend some time in that town. Coming up next, I visit an incredible feat of human engineering which helped connect all of China's main river systems. Traveling upstream via the Lijiang River, we now arrive in Xing'an County. This is the, um, the canal, the Ling Canal connecting the two rivers, Xiangjiang River and Lijiang River. This canal was built on the orders of the emperor over 2,000 years ago. Linking these two rivers made it possible for him to send troops from the north of the country to quell rebellions in the south. Over the years, the waterway developed into a major trade artery, but these days, there's noticeably less traffic. Well, taking a walk here does remind me of some small villages by um, the Yangtze River. And I guess, you know, when you have a river, lifestyle will be similar. You know, have water, you have houses, you know, people living by the river. Maybe one thing is different, food. Food must be different from one place to another. And here is a, a uh, tablet saying, this is... There is a local specialty called uh, Guiling Rice Noodle, and they say this is the birthplace of Guiling Rice Noodle. The dish has supposedly been around since the Qing Dynasty over 2,000 years ago. That makes it virtually the same age as the canal.
Despite its great age, the recipe has barely changed. Bouncy rice noodles in a savory broth topped with pork, peanuts, pickled vegetables, and a ton of condiments. Well, I have to say it's quite tasty, kind of different from what I had before, either in Beijing or in maybe in some other cities, because that's pretty much a national, national noodle, national taste. But how good it is, I can only say they're all good, including this one. It's hard to imagine what Xing'an would be like without its remarkable canal. What makes it such a masterful feat of engineering is the fact that two rivers it connects flow in opposite directions. While the Xiangjiang River is heading north, the Lijiang River is flowing south. I'm literally walking on a 2,300 year old water project. Just incredible. This was built 2,300 years ago. Because it's um, kind of flooding season, lots of water, otherwise, it will be all dry. I can easily walk over there. Even during the heaviest flooding, the interlocked stone slabs that make up this dam won't be breached. Now this is an ancient dam that was first built 2,300 years ago. With this dam, the water of the Xiangjiang River, which is a branch river of the Yangtze River, is divided into two parts, and this part, 30% in its quantity and its water volume is directed into the Lijiang River through a canal called Ling Canal. Now, what is even more significant is with this water project, the two water systems are connected. That is the Yangtze River water system and the Pearl River water system, and later even with the Yellow River water system with another canal called the Grand Canal. So with the whole water project, Water transport was made available even in ancient China. In the next episode of Travelogue, Tian journeys to Sanju County on the upper reaches of the Pearl River. There he'll experience the world of the Shui people, an ethnic minority whose name literally means water. <laughs>